Hello, good evening, good morning. Welcome everybody to uh, this webinar. Special webinar, uh, obviously today should have been Quad 360 in Washington. And uh, I for one wish I was there presenting uh, the scheduled uh, session we had for Washington. Thank you all for joining uh, for this special webinar, which is I'm going to run talking about multiple communities uh, for a rounded research strategy. So how to run multiple communities for a rounded research strategy. Um, just before I begin and whilst we wait for anyone else to join us, uh, I will just uh, first of all introduce myself and cover off a few housekeeping uh, things. I'm Paul Hudson. Uh, I'm CEO of FlexMR. Uh, on your screen, you should be able to see a slide. Uh, there should also be a chat option for you on the screen at the top. Uh, so I just want to just check now that my audio is working and that people can hear me okay. So could somebody just uh, place a message into the chat box uh, to confirm that uh, you can hear me okay? Brilliant. Thank you very much. That's good. Always good to get some, uh, some feedback uh, as we go in webinars. Um, you can use the chat box to post any questions up. Um, I'll obviously return to the questions at the end of uh, the session. So if there are any questions, post them into that chat box uh, and I'll respond to them at the end. Uh, for the sake of audio, I put everyone on mute. I hope that's OK. And then we can put the chat uh, questions there as well. We will be recording this webinar and we will be sharing the webinar afterwards. Uh, so don't worry about making too many notes if you want to. Uh, we will be sharing the webinar afterwards uh, on our social media streams um, and I'm sure uh, in other formats as well. Um, again, if you want to contact any of us, either use inquiry at fleximar.net or paul.hudson at fleximar.net. That's paul.hudson at fleximar.net. So I think um, we're now past uh, the start time. I think we've got a, quite a few people uh, on the call. Uh, so I shall begin. So I'm going to talk to you about how to run multiple communities for a rounded research strategy. This is a special webinar. Uh, so I'm going to talk to how we do that on our platform Insight Hub and why you would do that to create a rounded research strategy. We will be doing a, a live demonstration as part of this webinar as well. So reasons for running multiple communities uh, in parallel. There are many reasons why you would run different communities uh, full stop for different projects. And I'm not going to talk about different methodologies <clears throat> and the benefits of different methodologies today. What I'm going to talk about is the concept and the idea of running different communities in parallel. That's at the same time. Um, so we, the option of running more than one research community um, at any one time uh, in parallel. There are four main reasons why uh, you as a research uh, strategist or researcher might want to run uh, different research communities in parallel. <clears throat> One of the most obvious ones is the first one there on the, on the uh, screen in front of you, researching different segments. Um, for many, many years in traditional research, both face-to-face -face focus groups and online, um, you would run different uh, groups, different group discussions with different audiences. So you might have a focus group uh, with men, and you might have another focus group with women, or you might have different age groups or different segments. The main driving reason for doing that uh, is one, to make sure the quality of conversation is, is, is right and is dedicated to that audience and people feel comfortable as that audience. So uh, people may feel more comfortable sharing your group discussion uh, if they are sat next to uh, and participating with and discussing with people of the same uh, typology. You might also be running them with different groups, uh, different segments, because you need to analyze uh, that data differently. And for the sake of getting transcripts uh, and data out of your research project, 
it might be better to run those projects separately, sorry, those groups separately. And then you've got dedicated data that you can easily analyze and quickly analyze. And especially when it comes to communities, speed is often paramount. So you might want to analyze it differently. You might want the quality discussion uh, to, to increase by having people uh, of the dedicated uh, segment uh, together. The second reason why you might want to run uh, different uh, communities in parallel is to allow you to tailor that project slightly more for those different audiences. So for example, in a simple uh, idea of a focus group, you might want to simply have a different discussion guide. If you're running a face-to-face -face focus group, you might want to ask slightly different questions to one segment uh, versus another. Or you might want to just give that discussion a slightly different feel. You might want to use different stimuli with those different groups as well. Um, other reasons you might want to tailor the methodology a bit more. So in research communities, you might want to, for example, run uh, more tasks with one particular audience. You might want to run a pre-task uh, with a particular audience or segment, or indeed you might want to um, run more of a diary uh, with one segment, whereas the other segment you want, might want to run as more group orientated activities. So that option of being able to slightly tailor the research further, either in questions or style, uh, might suit your research project for those different uh, segments. A third reason might be to communicate with different audiences, so slightly less about the research quality and the research analysis and the techniques here, might be coming more from the audience conversation. Obviously with the research community, you might have more people involved than just eight or 10 that you would in a traditional focus group. Um, for example, if you're running communities over a month or so, you might have 20 or 30 people involved. Um, for long-term communities, uh, and the type that I will show you today as well, uh, you might want to communicate with different audiences completely. And the example I've got on that slide is employees, SME businesses, and consumers maybe. Each of those audiences is very different. They have a different relationship with your brand. Uh, they will have a different relationship with your research, for sure. Um, but they will have a different communication style. Your marketing, communi uh, your marketing manager would have a different style of communicating with those people. And in that sense, it also makes sense to have a community that tailors its communication style to those audiences as well, uh, primarily because it will drive your engagement and drive your agenda better. So communicating with different audiences, especially true for longitudinal communities where you want to engage different audiences across your business. And the fourth reason uh, is also fairly uh, common and fairly frequent and something we've been doing in traditional research for many, many years before research communities. And that's to localize, not just different languages, but localize your research in different markets. The obvious one is to run an international project in multiple markets at the same time. The benefit of running uh, research communities online in multiple uh, online uh, in, in multiple markets is that you can run them in parallel. Uh, so it will speed up your research to be able to run a leg in Spain, a leg in the UK, and a leg in America, maybe a leg uh, in Germany, all at the same time it would speed the research up, whereas traditional face-to-face -face methods would mean you'd most likely have to stagger those in series. So localizing different uh, markets uh, is another good reason for you to want to run multiple research communities in parallel. So given some background to the reasons as to why you might want to do it, the obvious question that might be sitting in your mind at the moment is how to run multiple research communities in parallel. Uh, is that possible? How practical is that? And does that create uh, more difficulty in terms of numbers of logins and juggling different platforms at once? Obviously, as researchers, we want to keep the research as streamlined as possible to keep it efficient for us as project managers and your team. So let's look at how we can streamline uh, that research in practice. I'm just going to move across now into a lot.
live demonstration platform. So hopefully there's not too much delay on, on the screen. Uh, what we're looking at now is a backroom view of our Insight Hub platform that we uh, own and run our research through at FlexMR. So on this screen, you will see there are three uh, projects in front of us. So we have three live projects here we've got. This simulates that fourth reason that we were just talking about. There's a reason here for us to localize our research. Uh, we've got an international project running in the UK, in Spain, and in Holland, and we're running a proposition testing community in those three markets. So we've set up three different projects in Insight Hub, and each one is going to uh, tailor to that market. So if I just move across and show you what that community is like for the EU participants. Uh, we've got a dedicated in this particular case. We've mocked up a brand uh, called Abrantos, uh, and they want to develop some products to help um, sell better into their markets. So we've got a, a question board discussion happening in this community, um, as well as some scrap boards uh, and some other interesting methods. But today isn't about the techniques and the methods so much um, as the actual localization. So that community is localizing for uh, the UK market. But I go back, I move back into the Spanish uh, community it localizes uh, into Spanish. So we have the advantage here of running three projects from one uh, space, one platform uh, in Insight Hub. The platform is the same, it's got the same branding for the URL, they've all got the same URL, which is making connections uh, .net. And I'm logged in as the international project manager, so I can see all three communities that are running, and all three of those communities are running in parallel. I'm going to swap across to another example, uh, and this is the demonstration for a bank that's running multiple longitudinal communities. Uh, so this speaks to one of those other reasons, which is to tailor my community to the audience. So I've got a community running here for consumers in the bank. I'm going to jump into that one here. And you can see that I've got some research question tasks running here. This is set up more as a longitudinal example. So it's a longitudinal uh, panel, effectively. And we're running community activities there for that uh, consumer audience in that particular example. If I move back, I can see that I've also got a business community running. And you can see there I've tailored the content and tailored the communication, which is the imagery, but I can also tailor that content that goes into that community. So when the business customers log in, all they can see is things that talk to them as businesses. They're not seeing the consumer side of the soft code bank. And likewise, I might even further engage employees in giving feedback. So again, I've set up a slightly different uh, feel for that space for that community. That community is more about engaging employees directly and mirrors the employee tone of voice that we have uh, for that part of the business. So this enables me to run uh, three distinct different meters with different audiences in parallel. <coughs> Excuse me. So each of those audiences logs in and only sees their community. But at the back end, as project manager, I can manage all three of those communities. So instead of running one longitudinal community that's trying to juggle all three audiences, I can tailor them and increase the engagement for each of those particular audiences through, through my platform. And therefore, I can increase, uh, increase the engagement, increase the feedback, and create more of a rounded and tailored research agenda for each audience. And now we move across to a different platform again. And this time I'm showing you a similar version of, of the one I, I started out with where I had my uh, proposition development communities in Spain, the UK, and in Holland. <clears throat> in this particular case, I've gone further just to demonstrate that they don't have to be research communities all delving into the same project. If I want to tailor my research methodologies, I can tailor the different methodologies 
as well. So in this particular case, I've got some ad hoc surveys running, I've got a packaging test running, and I've got a product development community running as well. So I'm running two, three, four, six different projects in parallel, and only one of those is my international research community that is identical in method. All of the other ones are different in method. If I go to the product development community, you will see it has a different field to it. It has different uh, content information about that project, it has a diary study running, it has a scrapbook running, and it also has open polls. It has a different setup for a different methodology, and then combining their individual tasks in a diary together with the collaborative fun tasks of a scrapbook. So it has a very different methodological feel for that audience. So I can also tailor my method, going back to one of my previous reasons for running research communities in parallel. I can have different methods, not just different audiences in there. So in that one, I've got a um, I've got in the scrapbook. And in my packaging test, I'm literally just running live chat groups. So I'm just going to run a series of dynamic real-time focus groups with six to eight people at a time. Uh, and those people will log in at their designated time and they'll be able to enter that focus group. So I'm running a project of live, live chat focus groups at the same time as the Insight Hub is also running three international proposition tech communities and also a separate product development community that's including a diary study. So that examples uh, those uh, four different reasons uh, that I started out with as to why you might run uh, different research communities in parallel. So the features of each of the communities uh, can be independent and unique. So this is an important point going back to what I've just been talking to. The reasons why you want to do it mean you want them to be distinct for their own purposes. Um, so, for example, each of the projects that I've shown, each of those different community spaces, yes, we've seen the different look and feel, we've seen the different content, we can see the different language in the international ones. It's also very important to remember that they've got um, different independent samples, so we've got a different segment, a different audience in each one. Each one can have their own moderator. So I've been logged in each time as the overarching project manager, the international project manager, or the panel manager in the soft code example. But you can also delegate that access out to have their own individual moderators. So you might have um, a Spanish moderator, a UK moderator. You might have a different live chat specialist moderator on that other project. So I can control access. Uh, for my different project team, which means I can build a project team uh, and have different people only seeing the project that they're moderating. That also goes to my clients, so I can make sure that only the client observers are given access to what you want them to see. In that last example where I had multiple projects and communities running in parallel, I've obviously got different stakeholders, and if you're an agency, uh, with an insight hub, you might have different clients. So you want to make sure you only bring in the client observers to the right project. So every project space brings with it their own sample, their own moderator, and your own client observers. And each one is its, is its own distinct uh, entity. So I'm just going to move back to my example here. I'm going to log out uh, of this uh, login that I was using uh, before. And I'm just going to paste in now the moderator login into this platform for the Spanish moderator. I'm going to type in Spanish moderator so you can see how it looks for the Spanish moderator. So you'll certainly see that everything's localized because the Spanish moderator is obviously from Spain. Everything about it is now shown in Spain, Spanish, the menus, as well as the project. And as I go back into that background that I was in before, you'll see that that proposition testing community, the only one that I can see as the moderator, 
is the Spanish content access and meddle with the other projects. And as they go into the administration of the Spanish moderator, I can see um, that I've got I've got a different sample. I can use that different sample. I've got different administration rights, so I can delegate out different access to different clients, and I can manage my participation and my tasks uh, into that community. Uh, but I'm obviously only running uh, my Spanish community there. So before I uh, check back to see if there's any questions uh, for the webinar, I just want to summarize what we talked about today and some of the advantages uh, of running multiple research communities in parallel. Um, so number one, yes, it creates a rounded research strategy, but it creates a flexible research strategy. It means you don't have to keep with what you set out with at the beginning. There are some cases, especially in agile world, especially with the methodology of a research community, where you might want to swap and change. You might want to morph or evolve uh, that methodology. And that's one of the key benefits and advantages of using a community in the first place. In which case, it pays to keep it as, as flexible as possible and keep open the possibility of maybe spinning out a parallel community, either with a different audience. In the case of the longitudinal community, that bank one, it probably would start with a consumer audience. And then over time, they might decide to add different audiences as they see the benefit of including a strategy, a community strategy for employees. So you have the flexibility to be able to add that or add a, add a new market and add another language. It allows you to tailor your approach to each segment. So it allows you to tailor the methodology, not just the questions. We've seen how you can tailor it right down to the methodology. You might have a diary study in one and not in another. You might add a live chat towards the end of, a pro of one community in one leg, but not in the other. It allows you to build project teams. So we've got to make sure we've got control over sample. After all, we are researchers and we love control over sample. We've also got to build project teams. We want to have different clients and different moderators on different community legs. You can't just have the same people uh, trying to run all of them. So it allows you to streamline your research strategy as well and have different projects. Ensure we have the right communication and style. It mirrors your audience. Just because you've got a research community, yes, there's an argument to putting a bigger sample in it. But remember, the better engagement you will get, the better your project will be. And sometimes to improve that engagement, you want to separate it either by market or by segment or by audience. And tailoring your style and communication will improve the success of your research community. So overall, all of those things build to a more successful and a more research, uh, more successful uh, rounded research strategy. So I hope I've uh, communicated to you today the benefit of running uh, parallel research communities. We have just got five minutes left uh, at the end of today's session. Uh, if there are any questions, um, then please do post them into the chat box now, and I will answer them for you. Just going to pause and wait to see if there are any questions. Okay, so anyone who joined late, there is a chat box at the top uh, that allows you to post questions in. Uh, we are recording the webinar, so we will also be sharing the, re the recording on uh, LinkedIn and social media afterwards. If you do have any questions that spring to mind after today, uh, then please email on either inquiry at fleximr.net or paul.hudson at fleximr.net and we will of course get back to you. Don't seem to have any questions coming in at the moment. Um, so I'll just pause another second. Can I just ask if uh, anybody found that useful and uh, that you did successfully hear and see the webinar today? Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you very much for the feedback.
Um, and I hope whatever time zone you're in, you have a very good day or evening uh, for some of us in the UK. Uh, and I hope to see you again uh, shortly at uh, hopefully the rearranged Quad 360 in Washington or some of the other Merlin events later in the year. Brilliant. Thank you very much for joining everybody.